Hi there, it's Rika Kovasen here with another set of videos for Seth Apter Creative Team. This time I'm playing with stencils. I'm making a set of ATCs, but I'm dividing the process in three videos. So while I'm working with the same project throughout, you'll get to see something new in each video. So let's get started with the project. I'm using spray inks through stencil as my first technique. It's a basic technique, I know, but sometimes you just need to remind those basics as well. I'm putting my stencil, which is from Stencil Girl called ATC Mixup, on top of cardstock and then just spraying the Aladdin dye sprays through it. I'm using three colors and letting them mix on top of my project, so I will have an infinite amount of different colors in the end. I'm also using the negative of the stencil, so I'm lifting the stencil up and flipping it to another piece of paper, transferring those inks that were left on the stencil to the sheet. This is a perfect way to break a blank page and also to be frugal to use all of that spray. To really clean the stencil of any residue, I use a little bit of water and then press it again to my cardstock. To make this layer a little bit more grungy, I then use the same water sprayer and add some water on top to lift some of the ink off. Then another technique. Again, a basic one, but I'm having a little twist here. So uh, while I'm using acrylic paints through the stencil, I'm doing it on top of tissue paper to create myself a um, collage element to be used later on. I'm working with three colors again and letting them mix on top of my project. If you have worked with stencils before, you probably know the dab on dab off rule of using paint with stencils. Kind of less is more in, in this case. The more paint you add, the more you risk it will run underneath the stencil and you will not have a crisp image. So if you dab some paint on your sponge, then dab some off before moving to the stencil. But well, I'm working to make a collage sheet, so it doesn't matter that much if some of the paint gets underneath the stencil. Like with the previous technique, I'm also using the flip with this one, but as acrylic paint dries so much quicker than dye spray on top of the stencil, I don't get that much transfer in the first go because I have covered such a large area. So if you want to use the flip, I then suggest that you work in smaller batches, not allowing the paint to dry that long on top of the stencil. I'm patterning two sheets of tissue paper like this, covering the whole area, but having some gaps between the layers of paint as well, because when I collage it, then the background will show through. Then onwards with the techniques, and this is technique number three. I'm using acrylic glazes through the stencil, and while I was using the same stencil, the mix-up, ATC mix-up in the first two, now I'm using another stencil by Stencil Girl called Timeless. And while I had a little twist of that substrate in the previous one with tissue paper, now I'm using fabric. So it's Good to have that in mind that you can use stencils in a variety of different surfaces. You can use them with paper, but you can use them also with fabric or even clay or, well, only your imagination is the limit. So with these, I'm again using two colors, but these are both brown, so there's not that much variation. I'm letting the glaze dry almost, before adding colorant to the fabric. I'm using tea as my colorant, so everything will go nicely together and have this kind of vintage 
spongy effect. What the paste will do, as it's not totally dried before I add the tea, that it will bleed out and create a lovely effect. I'm using a palette knife to apply the glaze, as I feel it's the easiest tool. Here's the pieces then all colored with tea and then dried. I then use my scissors and rip them into smaller pieces, so the pattern will be present there, getting a lovely effect to the pieces, but you can't really make it out anymore. I then layer a couple of these pieces on top of each other and use a sewing machine to secure them nicely together. It also gives them a lovely effect, so they are ready textile embellishments. Then one more technique for this video, and it's embossing. I'm using my C6 Big Shot die cutting machine and a silicone mat to transfer the pattern of the stencil to a piece of paper. I layer the silicone mat, then the cardstock, and then the stencil on top and run it through the machine. This causes the pressure to make a dimensional pattern of the timeless stencil to my cardstock. I then use Aladdin dye spray called T to color the pieces. I'm using a wet brush so the coloring will be more diluted, not so intensive. After a quick dry, I then highlight the texture or the dimension using a distress ink pad. I'm using the pad as it is, straight from the pad, but you could also use a sponge or an inking tool to just touch the tops of the texture. That's all the techniques and process for this video. I'm hoping you'll be back tomorrow to see more techniques and how I'm continuing with these elements I've created today. Thank you for stopping by today. See you tomorrow. Bye.